Hello. So this evening we are in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're looking at the Diamond DA40 TDI aircraft that comes with the simulator. And the reason we're looking at it is because the only avionics kit this aircraft has is the Garmin GNS430, which received quite a large update recently. So it's become part of the simulator now. It was a, this, this update was originally um, a marketplace download from Working Title that improved the GNS430, but it's now part of the simulator after the aircraft and avionics update. So I thought we'd go and have a look at it. And if you've never really used the avionics kit by hand, I'll, I'm gonna do a bit of a whistle stop tour around it. Um, it's worth pointing out, apparently, I, I don't know, I've not seen the real one, but apparently it's very close to the real thing now in terms of its functionality. So we're going to go and turn on the electron, electric master switch and clear the warnings. We're going to do this really quickly because we're going to be on battery power. Otherwise, the sound of the engine rumbling away in the background will drive us around a twist. So we turn on the avionics master switch down here and you can see the, um, the GPS has started booting up or the avionics kit, I should say. It's not just a GPS. It also handles comm radios and navigation radios. So we've got the um, course deviation indicator over here, or navigation instrument. Um, we will be talking a little bit about it. We're not going to go flying today. I'm just I'm just chattering away while we're waiting for this to boot up, really. But we're not going to go flying. So I will talk about this, but we won't look in too much detail at it. We're going to be focused more on the... Um, the GNS430 itself. So when it starts up, it comes up telling you about the databases it has loaded into its head. And you, so you can press enter on that OK screen. And then it comes up with a self test screen and you can press enter again. And then it simulates um, detecting the satellites overhead to do the GPS location. So it will throw up, you know, the numbers of satellites in the sky it will get the signal strength of each one. When it gets three green bars, when it gets three green bars, it will send you up on the map because it knows where we are now. Okay, so you heard straight away the comm radio chattering away. We're gonna change it. So that's the first thing we will cover is how we control the comm radio. So at the moment you can see it's set to 124850. That's the active frequency. There are two frequencies here, active and standby. We can use the the two knobs at the bottom left to control the frequency but notice there's this blue bar we can move the blue bar by pushing the middle knob yeah so we can either control the comm radio or the nav radio if we control the comm radio the outer knob is the integers so you can see that number changing the inner knob is the decimals so i'm going to just change it to a random frequency and then switch the active frequency to become the active one Sorry, but switch the standby to become the active one. I'm having trouble talking today. Anyway, so there we go. We've detuned the comm radio, so we shouldn't hear the tower anymore. That's all, all good. Okay, so what do we have on the GNS430? We have, obviously, those comm radio controls. The nav radio controls work in exactly the same way. So you push the knob, and it changes the focus to the nav frequencies. So you can tune in a VOR whatever the frequency might be, and then you can switch it to become the active frequency. And then if this is operating in VLOC mode, which it is not, it will light up. So if we press that, yeah, it's not it's not showing anything because obviously I've not tuned it into a VOR. But if I had done and it was within range, the needle would move and the omni bearing selector would come, you know, would have an effect on the needle. It's worth pointing out if you're operating in GPS mode, the OBS ring does means nothing anymore. When you are operating in GPS mode, the CDI, the course deviation indicator, this vertical needle, relates to where you are in relation to the track, but nothing to do with your heading. Yeah? So the the course or the OBS as you might call it has nothing to do with the GPS navigation, but we're not going to get too much into that today. It's just to make you aware of it. Okay, so what do we get in the 430? The interface is broadly arranged into what they call chapters and pages. So the first chapter you see, or when you boot it up, you are seeing the second page of the first chapter. So the first chapter 
is the navigation interface. The outer ring of the bottom right knob, if we are on, you know, if we're not in a form, which we, we will see in a moment, the outer ring will move us through the chapters. The inner ring will move us through the pages of a chapter. So if we go back to the first page of this chapter, you see this home screen showing you kind of your active part of a route if you're flying, of where you're going from and to, and the distance, track, and so on. You know, estimated time en route and direction of track and ground speed. So there's a whole collection of data it can show you there. The net, if we roll the inner knob again on this first chapter, we see the view of us over the map. Yeah? If we go again, we see a terrain view. So it's an aircraft-oriented view of the surroundings, but with colour-coded terrain. If we roll it again, we see air traffic. So if there's any air traffic around us in the air, we will see it on here. If we roll it again, we see the status of the, the GPS. And finally, we see vertical navigation. We're not going to get into that today. It's a whole other subject. But it's just to show you that there are many pages within each chapter. And on top of that, within each page, typically, the menu button will have different options. Yeah, so the menu button pops up a dialogue and shows context... Um, how do we put this? Context-related options for the screen you're looking at. Okay, just to show you how that works, by the way. So while we're looking at the aeroplane on the map, say this is an, a north-oriented map. So if we go menu, we can set up the map. So if we roll the knob, the inner knob, look, we can move the focus in the menu. If we press enter on an option, we then can configure that particular thing. So this is the setup for the map. If we roll the knob, we can move the focus down to north up, which is what it's configured at the moment. And we can move the inner knob to choose a different option. And we can say track up. So we'll select track up and press enter. So it's rotated the normal view around to be track forwards instead of north forwards. Yeah. We can put it back just by changing this again to north up and press enter. Yeah, to get the focus back out of here, we can just press, oh, sorry, we have to press clear, and that will get rid of the dialogue, and we're back at the map screen. You get a variation in the different screens, and you kind of have to learn it by rote, I'm afraid, about whether you can push this to get back out of the screen, or you have to press clear. If you get completely lost in the chapters and pages, just hold the clear button in for two seconds and it comes back to the first page of the first chapter. So you've just seen the chapters, sorry, the pages in the first chapter. Yeah, the navigation pages. We now go to the second chapter by rolling the outer ring. So this is basically a view of the database of all of the um, facilities that are in the database that we can go and look through and we can search it. So we can search airports, for example. But let's go and do something a bit more meaningful. So if we roll the inner knob to move through the pages, let's just see what's in here first. So we've got the airports, so we've got a different view, so diagrams of the airports. So we'll do it on this one. If we push in, remember, we put the focus into the first field. Whenever we push this, we're transferring focus. Now, we can either use the knobs to key something, or we can use the keyboard. I'll show you both ways. So say we went and chose San Francisco, which we're nowhere near, it's hundreds of miles south of us. But if we want to key in, we start rolling the inner knob. And it turns that focus into one character. Yeah, we can then cycle through those characters by rolling. Yeah, so if we wanted K, there's K. Then if we want the next character, we roll the outer knob and it moves the cursor along. Then we want S so we can go forwards or backwards through the alphabet. So we'll go backwards because S is closer to where we were. Then we go to the next character. We want F so we'll go forwards to F from A. And then the final character is O so we'll go KSFO, San Francisco, and there's the diagram of San Francisco International. Okay, so if you want to clear your focus out of there, we can press enter on that. And we can actually see information on specific runways if we want. 
So press enter on that, and it gives you the information on the runway. It's quite clever, isn't it? Notice the clear button doesn't do what you think. So you, you do get these odd things where you have to push to remove the focus as well as to put the focus in. Yeah. Anyway, so that lets us look up airport way, uh, runways. So then the next page in the database lookup is the uh, radio frequencies for each airport. The next one is the approaches. Next one is the arrivals. Next one is departures. Next one is intersections. Next one is NDBs or non-directional beacons. Next one is VORs. And finally, user waypoints. So you can actually program waypoints into the map by putting in their longitude and latitude. We're not going to get into it today, but it is possible. So those are the pages on this kind of database lookup facility, which is really quite cool. The next chapter is the auxiliary chapter. So it gives you some calculators for fuel planning, trip planning, and for looking at um, density, at altitude, true airspeed, things like that. So if we just go and quickly, oops, sorry, if we go and push in to get the focus in, see, I'm forgetting it myself. If you don't do this every day, you soon forget. We want to do some fuel planning, for example. So we press enter on that. So you could do point to point and it will figure out the fuel along the route. Okay, so if we come back out of there and go and look at the next page in auxiliary, see it's not completely implemented. There are bits in here that are missing, but you can change the units used in the unit and you know all that kind of stuff, date and time. So there are various bits that are working, various bits that are not working. But it's you know it's there to go and have a nose around. Okay, after the auxiliary, the next one is a lookup to nearest airports. So this is the next chapter. So you can look up nearest airports, nearest intersections, nearest NDBs, and nearest VORs. So obviously this changes dynamically while you are flying. Okay. Okay, that's the final chapter. So let's go back to the nav chapter and get it back on the, the main screen so we can actually see where we are in the world. The most common thing you're going to want to do in any of these aeroplanes is program your route in. So the, the quick way to do that is you can press the FPL button at the bottom and that's the flight plan. And it pops up the active flight plan and you can then press the knob in on the bottom right to put the focus inside the flight plan. Okay, you'll notice that moving the outer knob doesn't do anything yet because we haven't put anything in. To put a an airport in, we start turning the inner knob and it realizes we want to put in a facility basically. And that can either be an airfield or a navigation waypoint. Yeah, or a VOR station, for example. So we're gonna put in where we are in the world. So just to help us along, we're, we're at KBOC. I'm looking at little nav map here, which is Brookings State. So we could either use the knobs as we already saw to key something in, or we can click on this small icon, which is a keyboard, and I can type K B O K. So there's Brookings. And I can press enter. And that's inserted it as a waypoint. Yeah. I can then put the next waypoint in. So I start turning the inner knob and we'll put in our, our destination. Gold Beach 4S1. So I'll click on the little keyboard and I can use the keyboard now. 4S1. There's Gold Beach Municipal. So there's our basic route. But unfortunately, that's done point to point. We want to go via this waypoint over here. So how do we do that if we're already if we've already programmed the basic route in, but actually we want to go via somewhere else? What we can do is use the outer knob to move that focus back over an existing waypoint. And the trick is you're going to insert on top of it and it will push it down. So we'll turn the right, the smaller knob, sorry, um, which comes up with the lookup again. We'll put in YROG in there, yeah? So if I type in YROG and press enter, it has inserted it in between KBOC and 4S1. So it's pushed 4S1 down. So to remove the focus, we just press the button again. And to get rid of the flight plan screen, we just press FPL and it shows us the navigation again. And we can use the range, press up on the range 
which you can think of as moving you up in the sky, which means you can see more. And there's our basic route. So the next leg is always in magenta and the rest of the route is in white. So that's the basics of programming a flight plan. It's actually remarkably straightforward. If you wanted to do direct two along the way without losing your flight plan, say we wanted to, there's a waypoint over here called Ruti. Say we wanted to fly straight to Ruti for, for whatever reason. We can click the shortcut direct to button here. And if we go and click in there and type Ruti, so it knows it's in Northwest USA, and we can activate that and enter notice it's now gone magenta directly to Ruti, but it's left our flight plan alone so we can actually go back to our flight plan if we want does that make sense so you'd obviously choose a direct two on your flight plan to get back onto it okay the other way you can do that is you should be able to if we put the focus in here and go to menu we can uh, I thought we should be able to select a no perhaps we can't uh, maybe I'm thinking of a different system where you can actually select the um, the current leg but yeah so all you would do to get back onto a flight plan is just do a direct to to a point on the plan and then it would pick up where it left off automatically so it's not too owner onerous at all so that is the basics it's worth pointing out there's a message button so while you're flying along the the system will automatically tell you the heading of your next um, part of the route so you can click on message and it will tell you it will start flashing msg down here so you click message and it will say oh please turn to turn left or whatever angle or whatever obs is not implemented although he says that it's now switched on so oh they've they've improved it that's interesting so the omni bearing selector button is doing its job hurrah Okay, we're not going to get too far into that then. That's something for me to go and do some research on to explain exactly what that's doing, because that's brand new. Um, that's thrown me slightly. I wasn't expecting that to work. Uh, pr the procedures button does work. So say you wanted to fly a specific approach into an airport, then you can just go and select it. So we can select that. It will show the... Uh, it's showing them at the moment for KSFO, because that's what we keyed in earlier but it will inject them into your flight plan. So if you go and choose an approach and you activate it, it will inject those waypoints into your flight plan for you. Obviously, this will make no sense to do this, so I'm not going to go too deeply into it. I'm really just showing you around what facilities are in here. But the, the real point of this is to show you that it's actually quite easy to program a flight plan directly into the GPS. So you don't have to rely on the menu screen in Flight Simulator to do it. If you've got a free application like Little Nav Map, that will help you figure your route out. Then you just go and jump into the aircraft and you can program your route by hand. And it only takes a minute or two and it gives you that bit more immersion that you are using the hardware in the aircraft in the way it was intended to and you're not kind of shortcutting or cheating with importing stuff from Simbrief or anything like that. You're actually doing it yourself within the simulator. You know, and there's there's some achievement associated with that, I think. Anyway, so that was the GNS 430. Now, I'm going to go and I'll do another video in the coming days about some of those more advanced features, like using the procedures and the OBS knob. And we'll do a, a sample flight with it just to have, you know, to see how it works and to see how this works in flight with using the course deviation indicator and seeing the differences about when you switch to VLOC mode yeah because suddenly the omni bearing selector has a has a bearing on it no pun intended but um yeah it's radio navigation is a whole other story so again today we were just looking at the gns 430 i think it's fantastic and apparently the rendering of the screen is now remarkably accurate to the real thing you know down to the fonts the dot the dot pitch of the screen everything about it is very very good anyway I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully you learnt a little bit. And we'll come back to it soon with a bit more detail on some of the things that we skipped over. Okay, see you again soon.